This is Hillbilly with Rockstar Blues Radio, and I'm talking to the band Detrimental. How y'all doing tonight? We're awesome, Billy. How you doing? All right. Uh, doing great. So, uh, where y'all based from? Cincinnati. Just right around here, all local. Like, well, yeah, right. All Cincinnati, yeah, Cincinnati. Mason, kind of that area. Western Hills, yeah. Oh yeah. So, uh, how did y'all meet and form Detrimental? Uh, well, actually, I guess I'd be like the only original one left. Um, <clears throat> we started. I was actually DJing a street party. A guy came up to me. I didn't know a damn person there. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, you know, my last band just broke up. And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't know anybody. And he was up there. Just offered me some beer. He was really cool. He was like, yeah, I'm looking for a singer. I said, cool, I'm looking for a band. Went and hung out karaoke, got wasted, and mm -hmm. kind of did that. And then through uh, some uh, birthday parties that we played, Doug showed up. And he's been with us ever since. And then these guys are our newest addition. And uh, it's a pretty good fit. All right, cool. So can you all introduce yourselves real fast and what you do in the band? I'm Spider. I play guitar. Oh, my name's Matt. I sing. How do you do? Doug, I play bass. And I'm Matt number two. I play drums. All right. Matt number two. Matt. Dumb. Dumb. So what's you all songwriting process is, uh, is like a, as a band or an individual effort? Uh, oh, hell. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's all individual and band. You know, we do, like, we're, we're not one of those bands that have, like, one style of writing. Like, sometimes... Doug might come to me and say, hey, dude, I wrote this song. You know, it's really cool. Let's see what we can do with it. And we'll just, like, we break it down, put it back together, and just, like, really make it, you know, like, a whole unit of what we can do. Sometimes we're just in a room together. Just one of us starts doing something, and everybody jumps in, and just kind of that natural flow of it goes. But, yeah, we've, I mean, we've done it every kind of way possible just to get whatever is on our chest off. Right, right. So is there a song that you may have written, maybe have more closer meaning to you or special meaning that you've written? Uh, me, I would say Resentment, yeah. That was definitely uh, more of a, a close to the heart one for me uh, just kind of getting all around a lot of uh, emotional rough point in your life where you just feel like you're up against the wall and, and everything is telling you to do the opposite of what your instincts are telling you and you just have to kind of like break down and stick to your guns you know mm -hmm. how about you um, um, any song that you might feel closer to than others resentment yeah I dig that one a lot that mm -hmm. was pretty good so I'm big on move I'm, I'm the mosh pit guy mm -hmm. uh, I like mosh pit so that that's why that song was written it was strictly written for a notch pit song <laughs> right it's cool so i know like you got a newest member so yeah yeah and he's quiet we, he's we beat quiet. him we told him that's part of like if you're gonna be in the band dude you can't talk you gotta let us have all the glory <laughs> where we do all the interviews and everything you just hang out and that's what we right we got drummers like spinal tap yeah oh, yeah. yeah so we're gonna like you know he might explode tonight on stage you never know and then you'll see a totally different guy next week yeah. Yeah. Cool. Just go with it. Fortunate gardening acts. <laughs> Tim Cardinals. So what's y'all's musical influences as an individual musician and as a band? Everything. Uh, I, I like Metallica, Iron Maiden, you know, the older stuff. Uh, Breaking Benjamin. I, I've seen Breaking Benjamin I don't know how many times now, but that, that's kind of my, my stuff. I don't know what these guys are into. Right. But, uh, yeah. Oh, I'd say Metallica, Pantera, oh. Slayer. A lot of harder stuff for me. Oh, I cool. forgot Pantera. I'm the one they always make fun of because uh, I'm a little bit broader in my background. And like, obviously, like Slipknot, Corey Taylor, huge fan, huge mm -hmm. fan of him. But like, I go as far as from like that stuff to you know Billy Joel, um, freaking Fall Out Boy. I get made fun of all the time by these guys. Oh, I love Fall Out Boy. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. They're good. You know, just sit like that. Like, like you too. And, also, but I think that you know really applies to a lot of our, our style where we don't have just the heavy screams on everything you know we have like a lot more melody and try to put singing into it incorporate it well to get a nice balance but that's probably where a lot of that comes from is just having a background of diversity and different kind of music all right cool uh i like a lot of bands like um fashion bomb they're a local band out of chicago they're really mm -hmm. big uh toward with manson um i like as i lay dying static x and a lot of the industrial metal side of things so. right, cool. yeah. now is there a band or a musician would you like to work with or you know in the studio or share the stage with later on <laughs> Corey Taylor, easy. Yeah. Corey Taylor? I'd have to say Fashion Bomb. They're pretty good, man. Yeah. I'd have to go with Corey Taylor, too. That'd, that'd be badass. <laughs> Slayer, without a doubt. Don't lie, it's Miley Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> Slayer's a close second. So, did you all ever picture yourselves when you all, all was younger? Did you, did you ever picture yourself being a musician? And what inspired you to be a singer, be a guitarist, whatever, when you was growing up? Manson. I saw Manson live, and I was like, I want to be like that, and that was all there was. Huh? Um, honestly, what made me want to really get into music was Metallica, Inner Sandman. You know, just the first time I heard it, I, I'd never heard music like that, where it could be like, you know, it's that, it's that dark or heavy stuff, but it's just so clean and crisp and had that, just that, just, it was a whole different animal, you know? Right. <clears throat> That's what really got me hooked, and then later on, um, just drunken karaoke, you know, for like Drowning Pool and things like that, and I was like, oh, okay, I kind of like this, man, maybe I can get into this a little bit. Right. I've been in Metallica. I'm a little younger than these guys, so uh, I 
first one I got into was Load. The first song I ever heard by Metallica was Ain't My Bitch because it was track one. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, that and then the inside of that album cover was just they're sitting at that old fucking medieval table smoking cigars and shit and I thought mm -hmm. that was just the coolest damn thing when I was six years old. I, I just loved it. Right. And uh, ever since then, man, I've been a headbanger. Right, cool. uh, just going to concerts for years and years mm -hmm. and seeing guys sit behind humongous drum kits and looking cool always looked fun to me right, <laughs> right. what would y'all be rather be doing uh in the studio or be on stage oh god stage well, I'm, alive. I'm a live guy myself i love to be on stage, so. stage. i love the raw live energy uh see i mean if i had to pick i'd say stage but it's like 49 51 split you know because yeah. in the studio you get to like that's where you really get to create and kind of pour yourself into it but mm -hmm. the the live show is where you get that connection with your fans and that's just like just that raw power that you can build in a room and I love that right love yeah that. nothing like the energy of a live show right so is there any advice you could give like younger musicians now just now getting started any advice? um stay humble stay very you know don't let your ego go all inflated and stupid because you'll make so many more connections being laid back being cool working with people and you know don't let people tell you that you're not good at what you're doing I mean you got to think every band that you've ever heard on the radio at some point had been through like 20 bands prior to that they told them they sucked at what they did or they didn't fit or whatever was wrong so you're gonna have the whole world's always gonna try to take from you anything that you have that's good don't let them it's your dream man go with it right what about you oh I he said it that um, <laughs> Yeah, just uh, and keep keep trying. I mean, you can't you can't stop trying just because something doesn't go your way once, or you know, somebody was an asshole, you got screwed on a gig. It's gonna happen almost every every time. Mm. And uh, long way to the top. It's a long way to the top <laughs> if you're gonna rock and roll. Every right. word in that song. So, right. Yeah, persistence. Don't take no for an answer. If it's your dream, live it. All right. Cool. Oh, what? Let's add one more thing to that. Always give back. Your fans, you would not be anywhere, and you can't do anything on any stage if it's not for people supporting you. So, mm -hmm. always keep that in mind. You know what I mean? Make it the best show you can for them. Right. Right. Cool. So uh, after tonight in the Thompson House, uh, where y'all gonna go from here? Indy. Yeah. Indy, okay. December 9th, and then Pop Evil, December 21st. At Madison Theater for the End of the World Party. That's gonna be oh, big. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. So awesome. So um, now, like, what do you see as your biggest challenges being a musician or a singer or being a band? Period. Frustration mm -hmm. of um, the the biggest challenge is just having that perseverance to always push and always go because you know as Doug touched on earlier, you've always got places that like screw you over. You got people that tell you that you can't do it. There's always things falling through. There's always going to be things falling around you in your life that want to pull you away and pull your energy and your time away from the efforts that you're putting into your music. The hardest part is sticking with that and continuing to push forward. Right. No, and the other thing is you realize that it's it's going to take some uh, money too. It, you know, yeah. people don't really realize how much we spend out of our own pockets just running, delivering tickets, coming up here, building sets and, you know, mm -hmm. going to practice and all that stuff it, it takes a lot out of your personal pocket to do yeah. this and we drink know. like 150 each at every show yeah. so. <laughs> well, <laughs> even, a even drinking aside i mean right i'd say you have to uh, go along with each other too yeah. you have to get yeah. along with each other as a unit or else it just fall apart that's why mine has to stay quiet that's part of that <laughs> we don't, whenever he talks it like tension just starts building and we're like hey it was in the contract you know <laughs> so, so uh with that being said what makes the hard work pay off at the end of like playing a show or you know appreciation from people you know getting that release and then not it, it's not about you at that point you know like after you get done with the show and someone comes up to you and like man i had like the worst week and this just helped me through like this is exactly what i needed i got it all out or someone hits you up on facebook and says you know i really love this song i've listened to it a thousand times you have no idea how much it means to me you know and got me through and i always look at it because when i was a kid and i was going through rough things i'd always look at the musicians you know that were on stages and, and have this connection that i always wondered if they ever you know knew how much it meant to me to be on the other side of the equation that that just means the world, right? So how did y'all come up with the name Detrimental? Uh, that was an old one. That was actually before me. I do know the story, but Matt probably be better. Okay. All right. So we it actually was not our first choice. We had about fifty names. Well, the original members we all like wrote down a list of about thirty names that we wanted to do. Right. We voted on them, did everything possible, threw them on a hat, pulled them out. And I'm not even kidding, we must have went through 50 of them, and every single thing we could think of, we popped up on, on MySpace at the time, it was a big one, it's from uh, Facebook, it was just getting started, all of them were taken, every single one of them. Wow. I mean, I mean, we're sitting in a room, like, beating our heads against the wall, like, what the f*** can we call ourselves, you know what I mean? Like, what are we going to do here? And then, uh, we were, some documentary was just on the background, they said, yeah, this is detrimental to that, and we were like, hey, that works, let's try that, and he just pulled it up, no one had it at the time, so we're like, alright, that's just it, we're just going to stick with it and go. And then it's, uh, it's kind of been 
a self-fulfilling prophecy, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Sweet. So, so what does detriment mean, actually? Um, just something harmful or damaging to, like, you know, what's going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just, destruction. Yeah, destruction. So, uh, cool. So is there any pre-rituals you all got to do before show? And especially, like, you for you, because it's colder, yeah. do you do – what saves your voice as well, too? Um, you know, honestly, what you learn – as far as saving your voice is just knowing your voice knowing your body like that's a lot that I had to learn is that you know you can do all the exercises there's warm-ups there's a lot of that you have to do but really just know when you're putting too much into it and when you're you know you need to back off a little bit and just you know work with a sound guy always be cool to your sound guys those are the most important person in the room to you because you know if you're if you're pushing too hard you're gonna blow your voice out you know right. um, we, but we, yeah we always have a shotgun that we have to do beforehand we always shotgun a beer or do a shot together right. it's like a unity bonding thing and then uh, stretching, lots of stretching. Because if you've ever been to our shows, it's very interactive. You know, we jump oh, around, we're running, yeah, climbing, yeah, yeah. everything we get our hands on. So mm -hmm. that's I always a stretch like a mofo. <laughs> <laughs> I, right. I kill myself before, right. after a show. If so I, what about you? I usually try to run up up and down some stairs a little bit, get my get my blood pumping. If you go up there cold, it, you're, you're kind of stiff. But if yeah. I get, get moving around, mm -hmm. get blood pumping. You know, I don't want to wait till I'm up on stage to start right. all that. Right. So, uh, what's one of your craziest moments been on stage so far? I know it's you travel up back and forth all the time, so what's the craziest moment that you know? Um, geez, wow. Uh, I guess the craziest one so far would be, oh, okay, stage diving at Pop Evil last time we played with them. You know, we, we do a lot with all these bands and all these shows, and, you know, we always play bigger shows, but it was just... I've never played a show that packed. Right. Like, I jumped off the stage and stood up. I couldn't get back to the stage. Like, there were so many people in the way that I'm like, guys, I'm supposed to be up there. Like, let me up there. Just carry me through whatever you got to do. Let me get over there. I got to get back up. You couldn't even move the people. There was nowhere for them to go. And that was just kind of intense for me because I know that there was that many people right there. It just kind of made it real, you know? All right. What about you? I know you get up on top of the speaker and everything. Did you ever have that fear of falling off? Oh, all the time. All the time. Yeah, I do all the time. But it, it drives me to do to do it because people are like, look at that guy up there. That's really cool. People look up to that. So right. I do it every time. All right, cool. So what all sites can people find Detrimental at? MySpace. Uh, actually, you know what? That's not really interactive as much with us anymore, but Facebook, Facebook Reverb Nation. Um, what else we got? We, I know we got a bunch of them out there. All the music sites that are like... YouTube page. YouTube, yeah, we've got YouTube videos out. Uh, getting ready to put some more of that out. Well, that's, I mean, that's really all I can think of. If you go to any of those, Reverb Nation or Facebook, it'll have all the links to all the sites that we have right. anyway, so that'll be the easiest way to do it. Right. What do you think about social media sites like Facebook and MySpace? And all that? Does it help a band out or does it hurt a band? Absolutely. Well, I th wow, that's a great question. Wow. I think it does help them and it hurts them because it's, it's free advertising. It's free marketing. Anytime you can get that, run with it. But I think it's hurt as far as it makes a lot of bands lazy. Because, you know, it used to be the days of flyering, you know, putting up things all over campuses, going out talking to people, getting them to the shows, and you don't see that as much anymore. You just, people just make like one Facebook invite and say, oh, I did my job, you know, I'm gonna, I promoted the show. You're like, no, dude, I get a thousand invites a day. I, you know what I mean? Like, that didn't do anything to me. I didn't notice it. What made that stand out, you know? So it kind of makes them lazy if they, if they don't use it properly. So, yeah, it definitely helps, but you gotta use it right. Right. How about you? Think about social media. It doesn't help her. Uh, it, it helps, but he, he's right. That do get lazy with it. You know, we we trying to go out to different events and uh, hand out tickets, hand out flyers. Uh, we played the Rocking Dead show at Madison Theater, and we went to a zombie walk before the show. Yeah. Because it was a zombie themed show, and you know, it was a zombie walk. So we took some flyers and some promo tickets down there, and we tried to get some people to come out. It froze our ass off. It froze our ass yeah. off. Yeah. So, but. Uh, yeah, you, know, you, you gotta try different outlets. You, just because just because it's there doesn't mean that's the only thing you should be doing. All right, cool. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of that that goes along with you know. There's a lot of people we know they're always blaming the scene. Oh, the scene's dead. This, there's that. There's no unity. There really is. I mean, yeah. you know, there, it's a strong scene. There's nothing wrong with it. You just gotta get out there and work harder. I mean, it's not like back in the '70s when if you had a band, you were the only one in town. Like right. there's a band at every house now. So you know, you gotta make yourself stand out. You gotta put more work in. You gotta get out there to people. You can't just say like, you know, hey, I'm playing a show down there next Saturday and everybody's gonna show up because there's nothing else to do. Right. You know? There's so much to do nowadays for people and there's so much time that you right. gotta find a way to get into it. Cool. Cool. A year from today, where will Detrimental be? On the road. On the road. Yeah. Not here. Yeah, probably in some stinky Winnebago and Boise <laughs> Idaho. But I hope that's where I'm at. So. Right. I agree. On the road. On the road. All right, cool. So I uh, just want to say thank you so much for taking your time out and talking to us. I got one more question. I'll let you go. What does music mean to you? Life. 
in life. I mean, it's it's really the only thing that's ever been there consistently. Everything, yeah. It's there's nothing else besides it to me. So, all right, cool. Yeah, it. Uh, if it was if it wasn't for music, I'm not sure uh, I'd make it through the day. I, I look forward to these things so much that it it's what gets me through the day. I, right. Just being on stage, see, and the biggest thing is seeing a room full of my friends. Because yeah, all of our fans are great people. I love them all. They're room full of my friends. It's the best way I can explain it. Yeah, music. Imagine a world without music. I mean, my life is kind of a soundtrack. Every song I hear reminds me of a moment in my life. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where I'd be without it. I love it. All right, cool, cool. I just want to say thank you again so much. I like you, Billy, man. You fucking right. rock, dude. Thank You've you. always been a fan. We are just in the middle, and you're, you're listening, listening to rockstarsblue.com. Rockstars All right, we're going to slow it down just a little bit, but I want to say thank you.